J2EE stands for the Java 2 Enterprise Edition. It's not the compiler, although that is part of the download, but instead it's a collection of classes and utilities that you can use to write Java programs that run in and around a server. Actually, you can do more than that, but J2EE has been developed primarily as a builder of utilities for the server side of the Internet link. Now, J2EE is not just a set of utility classes that you can use to build programs, although that's part of it. J2EE also includes some programs that do things like generate class files from your configuration settings and provide a server and a container that holds and runs Beans as a remote service. All of these pieces can be utilized to create a networked and tiered application or a set of networked and tiered applications to fulfill your requirements. This course is more about the concepts of doing things, but it takes a practical how-to approach of explaining these concepts. Throughout this course, I'll be showing you a way to do things, not the way. In almost every case, there are other ways of doing the same things, some of them better, some of them worse. In every case, I'll be showing you what I consider the most straightforward way, the one that's easiest to understand. At least I'll be showing you the one that's the easiest to explain. I can't cover it all in great detail. This is a survey course that covers all the parts of J2EE and how they work. But J2EE is a large subject, so while I cover every part of the subject, I won't be covering any part of it to its fullest. When, for example, I show you the use of some methods in an object, you can be certain there are other methods in that object that are not being covered. The parts I do discuss are covered fairly thoroughly and you will be able to use them, but there are some details that just don't make the cut. When you finish this course you will understand J2EE and you will know how to use it, but you won't be an expert. There are a few things that you will need to know before you start. To take this course, you should already know how to program in Java. All through this course, the assumption is made that you know how to write Java classes and that you can read and understand Java code. To understand J2EE, you will need to be familiar with the structure of a class, how its data and methods work, and how a class source definition is compiled into a class file and you should understand how that class definition is loaded and instantiated into an object for execution. You need to know about overriding, overloading, inheritance, abstract classes, static methods, and things like that. You could actually take this course without understanding all of these things, but some of the inner workings will remain a mystery to you. If you know Java, you probably have some experience with HTML, too. It's a relatively simple, non-procedural language, and almost everybody has done something with it at one time or another. That's about all you need to know is what its purpose is and how it's used to make web pages. You will need to know a little about XML, but only just a little. I can tell you all you need to know right here. At the top of every XML file, there is some strange-looking stuff, and if you don't know what that means, just ignore it. It has to be there, so just copy what you see. An XML file is a collection of tags, like HTML. Each tag has a start and stop that looks like this. In this example, the tag is named Home. The opening of the tag doesn't have a slash, the closing of the tag has a slash. Every opening tag has a closing tag that matches it. You can open and close a tag in a single statement this way if you prefer. This is valid only if there are no values that go in the middle. The tag pairs can be nested inside of other tag pairs. One more thing. A tag can have one or more attribute definitions with it. It's like a Java property, but it goes with a tag. In this example, the person tag has a job attribute. Now, the names of the tags are defined in the dictionary, and the dictionary is named in that stuff at the top. It's up to the program that reads the XML file to figure out whether the tags are correct and what the tags mean. And that's fundamentally all there is to XML and all you need to know for the XML that's used with J2EE. The only thing it is used for is configuration settings.
Many years ago, SQL was devised as an easier way to talk to databases, and it was embedded in the source code of programs. And that's still going on today. It's more dynamic today than it once was. It can now be modified while the program is running. SQL is a command language. Each line begins with the command keyword, and the rest of the line consists of parameter settings for that command keyword. The commands used in this course are generally straightforward, and you can tell by the context exactly what's going on. There are versions of J2EE. Versions 1.2, 1.3, and 1.4 are the currently used versions of J2EE. Included with it is a server that can be used to serve web pages and act as a container of beans as they are remotely executed. This server is known as the reference server and exists as a development tool and as a reference for others to develop actual servers. In the real world of J2EE, you will almost certainly be using a different server from the one here. This course uses only the reference server that comes with J2EE. The code is the same, but the deployment of the software into your server and your server's container is going to be different. I use the reference implementation to demonstrate how things are set up and deployed in general, but you'll need to refer to the documentation of the deployment techniques of your own server. Also, much of the code that is written by hand in this course can be automatically generated by some development systems. This is especially true of the XML configuration files. The next lesson begins with the explanation of some of the basic concepts underlying J2EE.